everyone, Ken here, back with another video that can help you have a long and successful data science career. Today I'm going to be talking about the types of projects that you should do in your free time to make you more desirable to data science organizations and to help you reinforce some of the important skill sets that you need for data science. Please hit that like button if you enjoy this content and if you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe to my channel. The most important thing about choosing a project for you to, to practice data science skills on is for you to choose a subject area that you're interested in. The biggest flaw with a lot of projects is that they don't actually end up happening. So if you work on something that you're really passionate about, that you have a little bit of experience in, it's a lot easier to get the ball rolling and to actually finish something and to create a really good product. With regard to this, the first question that you want to ask is, where is my data coming from? There's a, a lot of great resources like Kaggle, like Katie Nuggets, but there's also an option to scrape your data from somewhere or to download it. So thinking about where you're getting your data could be a really big task if you're gonna write a web scraper to pull in data or a pretty straightforward task if you're using one of these uh, pre-built data sets. Another data consideration that you might wanna think about is how clean is the data in general? Am I working off a really well curated data set or is my data relatively messy? For the cleaning process of one of these projects, there could be a lot of upfront work and that might not be a bad thing. That shows real world skills, but if you wanna work efficiently and time is a factor, I recommend going for a data set that is already curated and doesn't have too many null values or, values or anything like that. In my opinion, there are three main project types that you wanna have in your portfolio to look at good as possible to any company that might be knocking on your door about an opportunity. These three line up with the three high level algorithms that you use routinely in data science. The first being classification, the second being regression, and the third being clustering. If you wanna get more specific with algorithm selection, I recommend using a random forest or some sort of gradient boosted random forest for either your classification or your regression problem. I would also consider using a neural net for either of those applications as well. Those look really good on your resume and those are skills that are very common and important in the real world. An example of classification would be if you're trying to predict if a customer would actually buy a product or not. For example, I saw a data set on Kaggle for Kickstarter campaigns. One thing that you could look for that would be a classification problem there would be to see which of these campaigns actually got completely funded. For a regression, you're looking to predict a continuous variable for the most part. You're trying to see how much people would pay for a certain product or service. That's one example. There are plenty others, especially in sports. So let's say you're looking at an NBA data set and you're trying to figure out how many points a team will score on a given game that would be a good application for a regression style project. The last one, which is clustering, is an unsupervised algorithm where you're trying to group things uh, by their attributes and how they occur normally in nature. So you'd be looking at something like a customer segment or how, can, how do these groups line up so we can use them as variables in another algorithm. Well, I touched on a little bit of this before, it's really important to be able to tell the story of your project to an employer or just for your GitHub or your Kaggle to get people involved, get people excited about it. So let's walk through how a traditional project should be structured. So if I'm talking to a recruiter I'm interviewing, first I start with my onus on why I did the project. I do a lot of projects on sports. Let's say I'm very interested in basketball. I wanted to improve my fantasy team. So I started looking into the data there, to try and figure out if I could determine which players would peak at certain times of the season. The next thing I would walk through is my data collection and data cleaning process. This is an awesome place to show off your visualization skills. You can do heat maps, you can do histograms, and these tools are really used to help you explain and understand your data a lot better and to be able to tell a story visually. The next area, which kind of falls in that category, is data exploration. Looking at um, you know, trends, distribution, the tendency of the data, 
to determine if there's anything uh, at a high level that would potentially be an independent or dependent variable. You look at a lot of correlation plotting, uh, looking at normalcy, things like that to get a good feel for what you're actually working with. The next step is model selection using a couple different, for example, classification algorithms. You know, is this a good application for naive Bayes? It's, maybe it's not normally distributed, so perhaps a tree-based model would make more sense. Uh, after you've selected the model, or while you're selecting the model, I recommend doing some parameter tuning. This would be the logical next step. So how do you get the key decision factor? So either the accuracy, the precision, the R1, things like that, to be the best possible for your data. You also want to have some sort of split, either using couple-fold cross-validation, train test sets, to determine how well your algorithm actually generalizes, generalizes to bigger problems. Python and sklearn have a bunch of really good parameter tuning modules. I use grid search a lot, where you can input a bunch of different parameter settings, and it will spit out the best one based on your decision criteria. So after you've found a model and you've tuned it, I really recommend explaining what the impact is for a business scenario. So for me, in my fantasy basketball analysis, I'll be able to say that, you know, these are players that I might switch in during this time of the season. At an even higher level, I might be able to take that to an NBA organization and say, this could have impact on your team's winning percentage or the bottom line, how many people are in the fans, but in the stands because fans are more interested in the game because it's close. As I've shared in many of my past videos, I really recommend putting all of this on your GitHub, on the Kaggle, especially if you get the data set from there, and on your resume, on your personal website, sharing this anywhere possible. This is the best way to one, show what you've done, and get two, get really good feedback and figure out how you can actually improve on your models and your decision making. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please share any of your projects that you've been working on in the comment section. I love to hear about new applications of data, and I'd also love to hear if this video, this advice is helpful to you. Thank you so much, and have a great one.